1977, I attended the 8th International Conference on General Relativity and Gravitation, which was held at the University of Waterloo in Canada. The conference was attended by many uh, prominent scientists like John Wheeler, Stephen Weinberg, uh, Paul Davis, uh, Stephen Hawking, uh, Chandra Sikha, uh, and many other scientists, Kip Thorne, for example. I contributed two papers to that conference. One was on the co calculation of the vacuum energy of the electromagnetic field in uh, Einstein universe. And the second was on Bose-Einstein condensation, again in Einstein universe. Uh, both papers received high interest from scientists attended my presentation. Once I was back in the United Kingdom again, uh, I received a prestigious invitation from Peter Landisberg, the well-known mathematician and physicist, to deliver a seminar about Bose-Einstein condensation in curved space times uh, at uh, uh, Southampton University. During the conference, I had the chance to speak to uh, Stephen Hawking. Uh, it was actually during a, a cocktail party. Uh, I asked him the question, a very fundamental question, about the, our realization of the uh, forces acting in the world uh, and the possibility of having something which we do not understand or cannot be realized by mathematics. My question exactly was, do you believe, Ms. Uh, Professor Hawking, that there is something which cannot be expressed by our mathematical equations uh, we scribing every day on, this, uh, on the boards of this conference? Hawking kept silent for a moment and then he, uh, uh, he responded by saying, if there could be anything, then it should be uh, logical. So I said, but do you think that something like that, I mean, things that goes beyond our mathematical description could be available or could be acting in the universe, nonetheless, uh, we cannot describe it uh, by uh, mathematics. He replied by saying that, in fact, I'm looking for that. I do want, I want to understand how this universe works, and therefore, certainly, I am after such a question. I believe that Stephen Hawking felt the need for an agency to run the natural phenomena which we are describing by what we call the laws of physics. Obviously, Hawking never looked at the driver of those laws as a supernatural power. Rather, he always thought that the power should be natural, stemming from the physical conditions of the state of matter and energy in the universe. Ultimately, this leads us to question what we call the initial conditions for the development of the universe. This idea he has expressed, in fact, in his book, the grand design, as he found gravity to be responsible for creating the universe out of nothing. Within the, indeed, within the prevailing paradigm, theoretical cosmologists assume that the universe has emanated from a point singularity 
that contained all the matter and energy which, is, which we see in the universe. This could be true. Gravity, or rather, a huge curvature of space-time must have existed at the beginning of the universe to make possible the transformation of the virtual states in the vacuum, the vacuum of fluctuations, to convert it into real states, real particles. And that's what we found from our basic fundamental research in this matter. The huge curvature of space-time, which is necessary to uh, produce uh, the uh, 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 real particles out of virtual states is something which cannot be realized unless uh, 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 we, we, we find or we question what's the reason for such a presence. How such a very, very strong gravity, in other words, existed to perform such a job. Theoreticians assumes that the vacuum fluctuation of gravity, vacuum fluctuation of the, of the gravity itself, may have peaked once to get so large as to be able to generate real states. However, this conjecture seems to be far-fetched in absence of a description of quantized gravity. Quantum theory of gravity does not exist as of yet. How can then we talk about quantum fluctuation, fluctuations of the gravitational field? Nevertheless, even if a quantum description of gravity becomes available, the question will persistently remain as to what kind of impetus would drive the vacuum to fluctuate in the first place. Why should we have vacuum fluctuation? A question which begs an answer.